This is lithium orotate. It's a new supplement that I'm actually using in order to prevent cognitive decline. Now, there is an article that was published in Nature that showed that in a mouse model, reducing lithium, cortical lithium, so lithium in the brain, by about 50% can actually trigger the development of Alzheimer's disease, of cognitive decline, the formation of these plaques, these tau proteins, and uh, these neurofibrillary tangles that are building up. They also noticed that when they supplemented these mice with lithium orotate, they improved again. So a lot of these lesions actually got better, some went away, and cognitively the mice improved. And it's feasible that even in humans, the onset of Alzheimer's disease is strongly linked with low lithium levels. Now, if this is causative or not, still needs to be determined. But the decrease of lithium is something that goes hand in hand with cognitive decline. And when we look at today's practices of over farming, a lot of the minerals in our diet, and lithium, of course, is a mineral, it's an element, you can find it in the periodic table, are less available in our diet today. Uh, another one that I mentioned previously as well is, of course, boron. Uh, again, also there, we used to take in slightly higher amounts of this. Now, the tricky thing with lithium is, of course, we know this for medicine. It can be used in many psychiatric disorders, ranging from psychosis to depression. It's a mood stabilizer, again, and it's, it works quite well there. But it has to be titrated at a very specific dose, and it's usually between 0.6 to 1.2 millimoles per liter. If you go above, that actually becomes toxic, Below that, you don't really have a treatment effect. Now, those are quite high levels. And uh, at the doses that I'm usually using it at uh, 5 milligrams of lithium orotate daily, I don't anticipate that being the case. But that being said, uh, this doesn't mean that anybody should just jump on a supplement like this. This is not an advertisement for everyone to start supplementing. I'm interested in this because I'm over 50. I followed the study. And of course, I'm doing my own lab values. And uh, you should definitely discuss most of the supplements if you can with a uh, good primary care physician that understands these a bit and can do appropriate blood tests as well. You know, it's not just for lithium, but we talked about previously vitamin D3, for example. It's good to have a blood test once in a while. I don't anticipate at these levels, again, that I would get anywhere near that uh, lower even part of that therapeutic range of 0.6 millimole per liter. And metabolic rates are different from person to person, of course. So there's always some caution to be advised here. But the interesting thing is that supplementation of lithium may prevent the onset of cognitive decline. Again, we need a lot more studies to prove this, that this works in humans. But it's feasible that this decline in lithium is a trigger, at least, in the disease process. And of course, it's something that we can mitigate by reasonable replacement. So we really don't know at this point what doses are optimal here, what works for people, when it should be taken, and so on, what are possible side effects even at low doses. That's why, again, a word of caution is advised here. But I think it's fascinating that we're finding out more and more what the underlying causes of this really are. Now, also what they found is when they supplemented with lithium orotate, the inflammatory process that was actually going on in the uh, mouse group that was deficient in lithium was actually mitigated as well. And that's another thing. We know that inflammation, neuroinflammation, is at the root also of the development of this disease, probably going hand in hand with low lithium levels. How they are related, if one causes the other, if they're happening at the same time, difficult to say, honestly, at this point. They're looking into all these factors that are contributing. We know as we get older, our risk for dementia is going up. This could have to do with anything from lower blood supply to possibly a type 3 diabetes, if you want. So an impairment of glucose metabolism in, in the brain, which is definitely something that has been observed as well, as well as, of course, deficiencies in vitamins and minerals, potentially. And again, lithium is one of the ones that might be really at the core here. So that's something worth looking into, in my opinion. So I'm going to keep following the literature here. I made the decision to supplement at a low dose. Again, I will check my labs on this, of course. I don't currently have, at least in my opinion, any cognitive impairment. But again, the idea here is to prevent these things. Once something manifests, once a disease manifests, or once something like cognitive decline manifests, it's really hard, in my opinion, to treat this. And I used to work with uh, elderly people. I used to be a Medicare provider. So I treated people that had Alzheimer's disease. And the medications we had from Aricept, Namenda, and others, they didn't really do much for people. Once this cognitive decline was there, it's very difficult to do anything to halt that process. So it's always better to be a bit more proactive and um, make sure that the things that we know are triggers are either removed or if it's something that is missing, like for example, uh, the appropriate lithium levels, and this is something that can be mitigated as well. So I think this is something that we might be able to do to help decrease the risk of developing this uh, horrible disease. And it's something that will affect more and more people. As a population, it seems that the onset of um, neurocognitive decline is coming earlier and earlier for many people. And we really got to find out what the underlying causes are here. But this is one of the modalities that might be very helpful in preventing this and hopefully allows us to age with a sharp mind.